America, the land of the free, home of the brave, and the stupid, and the criminally insane. The United States has seen its fair share of gangbangers, mobsters, and psychotics, who have roamed our beloved streets causing untold chaos, destruction, and corruption. Tonight on A Criminal History, a Grand Theft Auto biography. Tonight, we bring you a very special episode on one of America's most prolific C-list celebrities. We will take a journey across the nation following the often sad life of a man who has entertained America for nearly three decades. A man who eked out a career in radio and television across the country's entertainment industry through pity and self-aggrandizement, and his many encounters, directly or otherwise, with the long arm of the law. We will follow a starry-eyed young man from Liberty City to Vice City to Los Santos and back again, as we document for you the criminal history of the man known only as Laszlo. Today's video is brought to you by my wonderful supporters on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, one of the best ways you can do it is by joining my Patreon and supporting those who support me. All patrons at all tiers receive access to all of the perks listed on screen for only $2 Canadian a month, which is less than $2 American a month. But for those extra generous few who decide to pledge at the executive producer level, you can also promote your own content. Or if you really want to see me cover a specific game for the Game Vault, you can use the new Walker Villain tier. If you'd prefer to just give a one-time donation, you can use the paypal.me link in the description down below. Today's episode is sponsored in part by my executive producers Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, ChuckK45, and Diecastinator. You can check out Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99 where they play games such as NHL and MLB, and story-based games like the Red Dead Redemption series, with plenty more story-based games to come. Mason Collin's podcast channel, Where About Everything, where they discuss, well, everything, from zombie apocalypses to game remasters and more. Chuck K45's channel, who's working on setting up a channel all about buying farm equipment, fixing it up, and starting a new farm from scratch, and Diecastinator's channel, where they examine, review, and discuss all things Diecast, from the history of the hobby to rare models and much more, with new videos basically every day, in addition to buying, selling, and trading the Diecast cars. All links in the description down below. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, and please consider signing up if you enjoy my content. Even if you can't support me financially, though, you can support the show by showing my executive producers some love. And now, without further ado, enjoy today's video. As you'll come to see on numerous occasions tonight, Laszlo is less than reliable when it comes to descriptions of his past. Because of this, it isn't entirely clear where he was born. Only that it was either in the Midwest somewhere, or upstate Liberty on the East Coast, probably in either 1966 or 1962. He would have at least two siblings, a sister and a brother. His sister, whose name we could not determine, and who was apparently kidnapped in a parking lot at a young age, and Laszlo was either suspected of being responsible or was accused of being so, and his brother Martin, who would also grow up to join the entertainment industry, eventually becoming a famous and successful TV producer. We know that his father was present in his life growing up, but often drank excessively, and in his words was otherwise silent his entire childhood, and this may have contributed to the issues he eventually developed with his mother. Laszlo was an active and enthusiastic participant in high school band classes, and attempted to attend grade 13 at his high school, but was kicked out for unknown reasons. Perhaps related to his passion for radio work, which would land him his first real gig as an intern at the V-Rock radio station in Reddick, Florida in 1984. As the studio intern, Laszlo also functioned as the co-host or sidekick to the main host, Cousin Ed but the two would frequently clash on air, with Cousin Ed often demeaning and insulting Laszlo for not having a raw rock lifestyle, as he did, and for not being supportive of then-President Ronald Reagan, with Ed telling Laszlo on multiple occasions that he should just move to Canada if he didn't like Reagan. 
By the end of 86, likely at the age of 20, he would receive his degree in broadcasting school, possibly in Reddick, and then applied for Cousin Ed's job as the main host of V-Rock, which by 1986 had relocated its headquarters to Vice City. Laszlo would apparently offer to take a much lower wage than Cousin Ed, and due to the executives at the station caring for little else beyond profit, and knowing that Laszlo already had previous experience at the studio, they would indeed hire him as Cousin Ed's replacement. Laszlo would apparently send in his job application hand-typed in calligraphy and accompanied by a bouquet of flowers. However, even having landed his dream job, right from the get-go, things weren't all rosy. Though the company execs had hired him, they didn't seem to have much faith in his ability to carry the station on his own, as Cousin Ed did, and so they introduced the V-Rock Vulture as a mascot, with a deep masculine transitional voice that often played in between songs to help placate the portions of the audience who were woefully unimpressed with the new DJ. Laszlo would host the station from the building's new Vice City headquarters, but apparently also occasionally broadcast live from elsewhere in the city when the occasion called for it. He was known to have done at least one live broadcast from the Musty Pines Retirement Facility, owned by Avery Carrington, sometime in the 80s, but it isn't clear if this was for V-Rock or some other job he had in Vice City which we aren't aware of. It also isn't entirely clear how long Laszlo was the host of V-Rock, but it is clear that the minimal fame he acquired from hosting the radio station went to his head almost immediately. He would begin flaunting his fame at every given opportunity, and at least according to him, use his notoriety to get extra attention from women. Actually, dear viewer, I had my first encounter with Laszlo around this time as I had been managing my sister's band at the time in the same studio that V-Rock was hosted in. We'd been forced to share the studio space when a leaky ceiling ruined the building's only other good enough jam space, and it did not take long for our personalities to clash. Shortly afterwards, Laszlo was fired, and when asked about it years later, he would claim his firing was due to sleeping with a young female intern who likely had an abortion as a result, but it isn't entirely clear when this would have happened, or how old the intern was given that Laszlo started working at V-Rock when he was approximately 20, and only stayed for a year. Having lost his dream job, Laszlo would move to the West Coast by 1990, settling in Los Santos San Andreas and attempting to schmooze his way back into the entertainment industry. He would call in to the West Coast talk radio show I Say You Say, hosted by Peyton and Mary Phillips in 1992, and apparently catch the attention of somebody at the station who had heard him on V-Rock, and soon he would be working again. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go to the phones. Uh, yeah, hi. Here's the deal. I'm really funny, but nobody wants to hire somebody funny. I, I mean, how is that fair? I, I mean, I'm white, middle class, very erudite, um, you know, whatever that means, but people just respond badly to me. I, I don't understand it. Are you related to my husband? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't think so. I hope not. Have you got a question about politics? Yeah, sure. I know a lot about politics. Hey, can I do your job? You know, I used to be on the radio back in the day. Even my husband can't do his job, you strange, pathetic little sap. Let's have a real caller, please. Shortly after that appearance, Laszlo would land his first talk radio gig on WCTR, hosting the show Entertaining America, in which he interviewed various Vinewood celebrities, cultists, and philanthropists from across the state. He would land the gig after the previous host, Billy Dexter, was murdered live on air by a roid-raging Jack Howitzer. Perhaps because of his moving to Vinewood, but certainly fueled by it, Laszlo would begin to develop some eccentricities on the West Coast, as well as allow his drug abuse problem to reach its pinnacle, doing an absolutely insane amount of cocaine and often MDMA. At one point, he would even attempt the controversial inversion therapy methods promoted by Darius Fontaine. Apparently having long-standing psychological issues tying back to his childhood, Laszlo would be encouraged by Fontaine to sleep with his grandmother as a method of supposedly conquering his fears. But Laszlo would horribly misinterpret this already horrible suggestion, instead attempting to sleep with his own mother, and nearly being arrested for it. Let's go to the phones. Hi! La Laszlo? Ah, uh, Darius Fontaine, look, I told you to leave me alone. Look, look, it was an unfortunate incident that happened to your mother, but I was quite clear. Grandmother, not mother! It's your fault it doesn't work! I nearly went to prison, man! What you told me to do is illegal, in most states. Whatever! Look, Chris Formage is a liar and a cheat! He made it up! 
It doesn't help anyone apart from him. The fact is, people need to face their fears. Remember, I always say that. Face your fears. Don't run away. Darius Fontaine can kiss my ass. Oh, you'd, you'd like that? Would, would you like that? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. Because you are the devil. People aren't really afraid, you know. Yet you make them kill their families. Fears have to be faced. That's what I always say. Just ask Laszlo. Hey, don't bring me into this ruckus, Darius. This is between you two wackos. I mean, and you stay away from me, Darius. I've got a restraining order, dude. Laszlo, the only way that you can really communicate with your ancestors is to pay someone like me. Just a second. I want you to try something. Touch my cane. This whole town, man. I, I think you've seen too many movies, dude. You can be happy. Listen. Join us. Be famous. Find your true self. Have a breast, nose surgery, whatever you want. Lie with nine new partners a week. It explains everything. If there are no women, make them. From sand, from garbage, out of thin air. The rich cry too, Laszlo. Well, that's an interesting theory that sounds like it was formulated with pharmaceuticals. But, you know, I would like to find about being rich and crying, because right now I'm just poor and crying. But this is the West Coast, you know. I'm only the lesbians, man. It's destiny. Vinewood only lets you down. In the Epsilon program, there are no series finales. It goes on and on and on. We don't abandon you. Ah, uh, well, we're gonna have to abandon this show. Great, my first show and a dude nearly kills me. Now I'm being harassed by a former sociology professor and an alcoholic turned self-deifying cultist. Please. I gotta get back to the East Coast. This has been Entertaining America with Laszlo on WCTR. By this time, now at least in his late 20s, possibly early 30s, Laszlo would exacerbate his drug abuse problem by adding alcohol to the mix, which was all too common for people who spent as much time in Vinewood as he had. He would once again be fired from his job at WCTR and fall off the deep end, so to speak. By 1993, he would move back to the East Coast and begin living with his mother, being caught by her on his 31st birthday masturbating on his laptop. And in 1994, he would be charged for stalking, and eventually somehow wind up in Malaysia, digging sewage ditches near Kuala Lumpur. Laszlo also claimed at one point to have briefly worked as a fluffer in the pornography business, but we aren't sure when this would have been exactly. It's also unclear exactly how long he spent in Malaysia, how he got there, or if he was ever even actually there to begin with, but by the late 90s, he had decided to return to Liberty City once again, and remained there for a time, where he perceived the people as being generally more sane. His perception, however, may have been a little off. Upon returning to Liberty City sometime after 1992, Laszlo would once again find work, this time hosting the show Chatterbox on Liberty City Free Radio, and finally having the opportunity to do what he'd always wanted to do on air, which was simply to take live calls and speak to the people. Uh, this is Chatterbox. What's ever on your mind, however big or small, just give me a call. Lines three. He's shaved downstairs. He looks a lot bigger. <laughs> Go away. Please stop calling the show. This is Chatterbox, hello. Please be a normal human being. That's all, your show sucks. Dude, you're gonna get no argument from me. Today's show is rubbish. What do you want to talk about? How come I can't eat people? Okay. Who says you can't? What, were you a socialist or something? Talk more about eating people! Laszlo would also apparently attempt to finally get his love life in order upon returning home. He would get married three separate times before 1998, apparently never actually getting a divorce in between relationships, leaving him in a precarious legal position. He was also receiving increased attention from his now decade-long career in radio, even having the occasional, if unstable, fangirl. Next caller! <laughs> Hi, my name's Ursula. I'm a white witch. I have the power of the night. Oh boy. Hey, you are- oh, jeez. Okay. I am your biggest fan! You aren't gonna complain about my clairvoyance or something. Have you been snorting some mugwort? Well, of course. <laughs> what is with that laugh? So listen, we're having a meeting of our coven, and we're all really big fans of yours. Wow, that's cool. Hey, hey here's a little advice. Guys really aren't into chicks who say they're witches and they can cast spells and practice magic and they have an altar. I, I think you're just a confused goth chick. Hey, I'm not confused. It's my cousin. We're really big fans. I've got several photos of you. <laughs> my spirit medium says we were married in a past life. 
And you know what? I was the man in the relationship. Oh, easy. You're freaking me out, dude. Hanging upside down to sleep doesn't make you cool or alternative, all right? I know, because I tried it. Hey, are you single? Yes, uh, I, I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm married to, to, to three women. Please, I still, can we... Okay, but just to counteract what that guy just said, I never shave. The dark forest is quite enchanting. Go, go away. Get off my phone. Get off my show. What is wrong with this city? It's 1998, people. The millennium is almost upon us. You know, this is much bigger than the conspiracy of daylight savings time. We're supposed to be worrying about computers accidentally launching nuclear missiles on us and how to make a fortune investing in cyber kitty litter. All right, let's take it up a notch. I beg you, please. Think of my career. It's going down the cramper here. I mean, I'm a nice person. I deserve to do well. You know, people like me, I've only betrayed friends once or twice, and, and they had it coming. Sometime during or prior to 1998, Laszlo would be accused of saying expletives on the radio and be sued for 150 million U.S. dollars, further burying him in legal fees. But he would apparently receive at least one lucky break around this time, which may or may not have helped him to deal with his various legal entanglements. He would meet with and begin scheming with then-mayoral candidate Donald Love, who had plans to build a media conglomerate from the ground up for ambiguous but likely nefarious purposes, and one of his first purchases was Chatterbox. You know, you can never tell that you stink until it's too late. I learned that a long time ago. Well, looks like that's all we have time for, which is a, you know, a damn shame. Uh, French chefs and self-righteous rednecks don't deliver the kind of radio I can deliver. But, uh, you know, me and my buddy Donald have got some big plans for this station. Seabox, 24-7. Sometime in 1998, he would also be charged with forcible touching, and though we have no other details, we suspect this was either related to one of his three potential wives at the time, or perhaps his grandmother slash mother. By 2001, he would work out his marriage situation and settle on one wife, finally divorcing the others, we assume, and life would seem to finally stabilize for him, now in his mid to late 30s. He would continue to take calls from people across Liberty City live on air, now the host of a station paid for not by public funding, but by an eccentric millionaire and heaps of advertiser revenue. In addition to normal callers, he would also interview the occasional celebrity or otherwise interesting individual who paid the station's parent company, Love Media, to be on the air. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome Fernando Martinez, who it uh, says here is the founder of Fernando's New Beginnings, a revolutionary new way of saving your marriage. Fernando, welcome. The pleasure is mine, Laszlo. It is an honor to be here. I feel blessed. Ah, uh, thanks. So, tell me about Fernando's new beginnings. Truly, Laszlo, it is a miracle. A blessing. It is a revolution in the marriage guidance. For my people, marriage is, how do you say, sacred. The bond between the father and the mother, it is made in heaven and in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think so. <laughs> For my people, it is the holiest, most sacrosanct thing imaginable like a church. Yet, for it to be a happy marriage, it must also be like a brothel. The woman, she must be many, many arts, be skilled in making house, cooking, changing the diapers on the babies, and she must also be a whore, a vixen in the bedroom, imaginative, exotic, constantly fresh. It is impossible. You change diapers and then you are a French maid? Fernando thinks not. Fernando knows not. Well, I mean, you know, it's an age-old problem. I mean, how do you keep the excitement in a marriage? Excitement, exactly. Passion, danger. How, Laszlo? How? Tell me how, and I give you a big, big kiss, like I gave a woman. But I am not going to give you a big kiss. Not a kiss like I gave a woman, or even a donkey. Because, because you do not know. Well, I mean, in this case, ignorance uh, kind of seems like bliss. I, I wasn't really up for kissing on air. I mean... Why not, Laszlo? Am I not attractive? Am I not irresistible even to you? Well, no matter. Why all this talking about kissing? I mean, you brought it up. No, my friend. You say you not want to kiss me. I was talking how to say hypothetically to make me all personal. It's a big difference. If I say, imagine if your wife was ugly, you can nod your head. But if I say, hey, Laszlo, your wife, she looked like yesterday's dinner after I eat. You not so happy. It's a big difference, my friend. Anyway... The marriage is impossible, Laszlo. If a man was born an angel, maybe impossible. But a man is born a man. And a man with knees. He needs a woman to tuck his babies into the bed. But for his bed, he needs something else. Something magical. 
a dream, un sueño. So he starts flirting with his secretary, takes her out for a drink. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, he's found all kinds of uses for the office furniture. Exactly, Laszlo. I know what you are like. I see it in your eyes. A wanderer, a dreamer, a man who has knees, but an idiot. And I can save you. And I can save your marriage. <laughs> My marriage doesn't need saving. <laughs> hey, you are the one mentioning the pretty assisting and the office furniture and the Aikarama, my friend. Listen, Laszlo, and listen very closely. Your marriage is a gift. It's a present from above. But you are a man. I think we see by now you are no angel. I can save you. For when the man, he sees wife all fat, all early, with the dirty diapers and the dirty panties and the scrubby brush and who knows what else. He's not thinking of marriage bad. He's thinking about, well, you're thinking about your pretty assistant. We already know that. See? And go on. But Laszlo, what if you act on your fantasy for your little secretary with the short skirt and the pretty eyes and uh, come here and come there smiling? What then, my friend? What then? Um, I get a sexual harassment suit. If you are lucky, my friend, but you more likely, your marriage is ruined, Laszlo. Your sweetheart, she hates you. Your pretty secretary, she wants you to be her man. You back it to square one. My friend, you and a thousand men like you. For me, once it was so. But then one day, I was driving my car, and I realized, Fernando, you are blessed. You are a miracle. A thousand miracles roll into one. You save the marriage, and you save the man. You don't put the marriage first, and you don't put the man first. Maybe we call it man marriage. Then I think to myself, no, this is a bad name. It sounds really dumb. Then I think we call it Fernando's New Beginnings, because that is what it is, a new beginning, Laszlo. So how does this work? It is a miracle, Laszlo, a miracle. A man is a good father, a loving husband, the winner of bread six and a half days a week. On the spare half day, I save his life. How? By giving him what he needs in a controlled environment. I give him passion. <laughs> what, with you? That kind of sounds like a limited market. Last Lloyd, you are very prejudiced. I don't like that. But no, not with me. Passion for life. Passion for love. Passion for women. Which he can take home to his wife, of course. What, so you act like a pimp? Not a pimp, little man. A savior. In a controlled environment, I reintroduce the man to the pleasure he has lost, to the miracles of the world. And truly, the results are remarkable. With my unique counseling, a thousand marriages have been saved, and a million more could be saved every day. <laughs> and, and do the wives know about this? In their hearts, Laszlo, they know they have been saved. Uh, okay. We're going to open it up to the phones. If you've got any questions for Fernando Martinez, exotic marriage guidance made easy, ring us now. Hey, oh, cool. We have a caller on line one. Caller, you are on Chatterbox. Hi, Laszlo. Hey, Fernando. My name's Jerry, and I'm a first-time caller. And I just wanted to say, hey, Laszlo, you're real tough on Fernando back there. I'll tell you one thing. He's a miracle worker. He saved my marriage, and I married a bus of a woman. Now I don't feel sick every time I open my eyes. See, Laszlo? You see? I remember Jerry so well. He come in, he is like a broken man, like a half a man, a me, if you will. He has no end anymore. And his marriage, it is killing him. Where is the passion? She is gone, replaced by ugliness. You see, Laszlo, Mrs. Jerry, she's not a pretty lady. She's more like an offensive lion or a tight end, big and hairy, but fertile. She gives Jerry five kids, but she's even bigger. Now she's like a whole offensive lion. He feels no pride in himself. He has no pride in his marriage. He is ashamed of this wonderful lady who bears him so many young. And he comes to me and he cries, Fernando, save my marriage. I love my wife, even though she is a fat porker. And I say, Jerry, you are a man. It is a man's duty to love his wife even if she is like a farmhouse. And now, Jerry is safe. By sleeping with other women. Whatever it takes to save a beautiful union, a blessing. A beautiful union by a, an adulterer and Queen Kong. <laughs> That's great. So uh, who's on the line now? Hi, Laszlo. This is Janice. I love the show and always wanted to call in, but you really offended me today. Who is this gutter trash you got on the show? Hey, Janice, I share your anxiety. The studio kind of uh, forced him on me. Hey, you watch yourself, mister. And you, Janice, why are you so ugly? Your husband, he no make you happy? No, he's an idiot and a jerk. 
but he's probably a good daddy, and you sound very pretty. Angry, and a little bit of a know-it-all, but very pretty lady. This is the thing, Laszlo. The women they think in new beginnings is only for men. But no, it is for women too. For Janice, if her husband goes to new beginning, she thinks Senor Wonderful all over again. And in the extreme case, maybe she come to work for me, and she get a new beginning herself. She discovered the excitement and the passion all for herself. Listen, Janice, you call me cinco, 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 nueve dos, nueve dos. <laughs> now listen, don't try to pimp out my listeners. That is a very early word. A travesty. I work miracle, senor. Not pimping. I save. I give the passion back. And you better wash yourself, buddy. Because for my people, we take these insults very personally. And then, you no longer Mr. Talk Show. You Mr. Who Cut Up My Tongue. <laughs> who are your people anyway? I, uh, which exotic location do you come from? I am... I am Latin. <laughs> Latin is a big place there, buddy. W where in Latin? I do not need to listen to these insults. I have pride. I have a calling. Many are called, but few are chosen, my friend. And I was called and chosen to work a miracle. So, uh, where were you called from, Fernando? From upstate, okay? Too happy money now? I'm not real Latin, but I provide real Latin passion. I work the miracles every day. Listen, wives, children, if your husband, if your daddy, if he's not happy, send him to me, Fernando. In exchange for a few hours a week, I give you the world. Get off. Get lost. You're just a cheap pimp from upstate. Get out of my studio. I save your daddy. I save your husband. It is a miracle. Get out of here. It's a miracle. For whatever reason, by this time in his life, Laszlo had developed an even stronger sense of smug superiority than he'd had when he lived in Vinewood. Despite his own often eccentric and occasionally illegal activities, when running the show Chatterbox, he would often act as the last sane man in the city. Though, to be fair, his callers did often have the habit of making someone even as unhinged as him look sane. All right, let's go over to here to line 79. Hello, you're on Chatterbox. Hello, uh, is that Laszlo? Uh, yes. <gasps> oh, wow, I'm on the radio. How, how exciting. Oh, thank you, Laszlo. Um, is this on the radio? I mean, am, am I actually on the radio right this second? Uh, uh, yes, you are. Uh, I'm sure it's very exciting for you, but uh, what do you want to talk about? <gasps> oh, man, I mean, what, what, what else is there? I could go on all day, but well, you know how it is, don't you, Laszlo? <laughs> Uh, not really. I mean, what's your name? What did you call about? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm Maria. You know, Maria, like Mamma Mia. O only different, you know. But, you know, men. M-E-N. <laughs> oh, it's a dirty word. Only There's only three letters. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I mean, your broadcasters are all the same, aren't you? I mean, I heard about you. You're always out on boys' nights. Whoa, whoa. whoa. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm married. Uh, one of those convenience jobs to protect you, I bet. I know what you're all like. You know more about men than I know about leopard skin furniture. So, less of that clever stuff and give me some advice. I mean, come on, I got real problems. You see, okay, I had this boyfriend. And at first, he was real kind to me. He was a real gentleman. A little bit older and everything, but you know, he treated me really good. And then it all went wrong. And so, you know, I found someone else. And he seems real nice, but, you know, he don't talk too much. So, I really can't tell if he likes me. And, well, I guess what I want to know is... You know, how do you tell if a guy is serious? I mean, you know, he treats me good, but he don't seem real interested in me. You know, he's always working and hanging out with the guys. Um, say, you don't think he's like you, do you? What do you mean, like me? Well, what are you insinuating? Th that he's on the radio? Well, probably not. Um, y you're listening to Chatterbox, where your opinion matters, or at least we say that. Let's go over here to line four. Hello, caller, what's your name? While working at Chatterbox, though, Laszlo would at least twice, possibly more than that, take payola, an illegal practice in the music industry of playing music live on the air for payment without disclosing that payment. The details of the scandal are not public knowledge, but the result would be Laszlo losing yet another job in radio in 2002. He also seemed to slip back into his drug habit around this time, reaching such lows as snorting cocaine off of toilet seats, and even allegedly drugging a woman, taking her back to his apartment, and requesting a three-way with her and his wife. In the midst of all this chaos and drama, Laszlo's wife would eventually become fed up and divorce him, apparently at least in part because of him sleeping with an intern back in Vice City and the subsequent abortion. 
To make matters even worse, the woman he allegedly drugged would soon after file a lawsuit against Laszlo, and his ex-wife would effectively drain his bank account on her way out the door, before the divorce procedures had even begun. At some point prior to 2008, Laszlo's ex-wife would remarry his former best friend, causing Laszlo to further obsess over her for the next several years, and interfering with his ability to date other women, who often found the circumstances surrounding his divorce and stalker-like behavior just a bit too much to bear. His downward spiral would only continue, being arrested multiple times over the next couple years. First, for publicly urinating while attending a Liberty City Swingers game in 2002, and then again for another payola scandal in 2004, we assume related to an old chatterbox transaction. He would be arrested a third time in 2005 for exposing himself to an old woman on the streets of Liberty City, perhaps related to what he'd done to his grandmother years earlier. Between 2005 and 2008, he attempted to get his life back on track though, somewhat, by raising funds to start another radio station in Algonquin, which was rumored to be called Laszlo 2.0, and by mid-2008, he would finally gather enough money to make it happen. He's still a dork. And people keep giving him jobs. Maybe they feel sorry for him. He's that wise-cracking doofus, Laszlo, only on Integrity. All right, you're listening to uh, Laszlo 2.0. You know, this, it's called Integrity because it's you know it's sort of about me. You know, uh, like like how I'm gonna someday be a like a millionaire in blue jeans and you know with a guitar kind of slung over my back, singing singing about the struggles of, of being a blue collar guy. Because you know this show's about everybody, not just the people with money. You know, but I like this guy. Here's here's a working class guy on the street, street food uh, kind of vendor guy. Hey, how much does a hot dog cost, guy? You what? You got a radio show? Yeah, you're you're on the radio. T oh, tell yeah. us about how you live. Uh, like piled 18 high uh, just to make it in Liberty City. Oh, first let me say hi to everybody. Juanita, how are you? How are you doing? My friend Paul, who lives uptown. Hi, hello. I'm doing good, selling hot dogs. I want to say hi to my kids. Oh, my I want to gosh. say hi to everybody. People just breed like rabbits. Listen, just give me the hot dog. And I want to say hi also to my friend Paulito. I want to say hi to the guys over at the Delicatessen. They're always so nice to me. Why are you, uh, listen, why are you people so friendly? Who's, who's people? What you are you people. Mean by, where are you from? I'm from Central America. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stupefied. I, I can't really understand what you're saying. Could, could you... You're stupid? No, you got to work on the English a little You're bit. stupid? Hey, you know what, man? <laughs> you have to work on the English. <laughs> we're a team, right? <laughs> we're a, we're no. a comedy team. No, <laughs> we're not a team. I am a radio genius, and you are... So, so I'm trying to expose the daily... So this is sort of like a radio documentary. Like, I'm exposing... You, you know, how, how shitty your life is, and, and how your, your father looked down on you one day and hey. whatever dusty shit old town you were in and said, son, someday you'll be huffing car fumes on a, on a shitty street corner selling food poisoning to, to celebrities like Laszlo. Hey, guy, you, you think your, your father's proud of you? Come on, man. Well, I mean, my father was, you know, kind of strangely silent my whole childhood, which kind of explains a lot. But listen, dude, I'm trying to bring the media back to the people on the street corner, you know, on the radio, because I thought to myself, Laszlo, get back to what you know. Get back to entertaining people, you know, sleeping with groupies and in broom cupboards and, and, and on yoga mats, you know. Uh, what is this, 1969? Uh, no. Uh, and also, uh, listen, guy, that's your name is Laszlo? Yes. You make fun of me and your name is Laszlo? That's a clown name. That's a stupid clown. Listen, I'm not a clown. You, dude, I've been around. You, I, I used you haven't to do been around? Coke when? off of toilet seats. You know, I took payola. You know, I, I got paid to make nasty comments about people. And, and everybody said I was really funny and that I was a great guy, you know. And deep down, don't you feel like you have a deep, dark secret you can't admit? And yeah. the hell starts kind of rising up again inside and the, the lying and the deceit. And, yeah. You know, and you look at your best friend and even though he's a guy, you know, you just you just wonder, what if? Yeah. Okay. And, and you know, and I mean... But I don't go spilling it on the streets like this to a hot dog guy, right? I know this is quite a struggle, uh, being a hot dog vendor, living 18 people to one of those tiny rooms and no, Mr. having Mr. to hey, 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 wire hey. money back to shithole wherever the fuck you're from. Hey, guy, I hey. understand. I'm from the Midwest. Hey, listen, guy. You don't know my story, all right? Yeah. I, my, my mother raised me and my grandmother raised me. Right. But we would wake up every day and we had no money. We had no water. Uh -huh. do, you know what, do you know what we use for water? Urine. I don't know. What? Tears. Tears. Okay. The tears of my family. That's what we had to drink because we had no money. I so you here. would milk your grandmother like she's some kind of tear cow. You don't understand our culture, man. No, I don't. don't. I see it on you the television. You win all the fucking shitty singer competitions on TV because, oh, we've got passion. Well, no. guess what I've got? You know huh? what we have? I've you know got what? a convertible. Please, hippie. 
Hippie? Yes, hippie. Dude, you're a real prick. What's your... Oh, what? You're on the street selling food poisoning. You're listen, get... listen, these are good hot dogs, okay? Shut up. No, no. Listen, you shut up. Dude, wh why don't I shove your fucking stupid face in the hot dog water, huh? How would you like that? I'll, I'll, let me give you a little bit of Ow. American history, Ow. okay? To people like you. Ow. Let me grab the back of your fucking head Ow. and Ow. shove Ow. your stupid Ow. face Ow. into the Ow. fucking Ow. hot dog water. I am a fucking celebrity on the edge. And Please I'm, don't do that. I had it. I'll take the, how do you like America Ooh. now, motherfucker? Ooh. Yeah! Ooh. That's right. God, I fucking... I feel alive again, you know, like a like a man when you just grab the back of the head of another man and you just shove it right where you fucking where you want it to go. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. I'm a man. Yo, you're an asshole. Hey, pipe down up there. Go back to beating up your fat wife. You better shut up. I'll come down and beat the shit out of you. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna get a couple blocks away from here. Why are the street vendors in this town such assholes, man? All right, this is uh, Laszlo Show on Integrity. It's in association with Zit, you know, my sponsor. You know, speaking of foreigners, if we're going to get to the underbelly of the city, you know, we should take a cab ride. Excuse me, taxi. But for anybody even briefly under the impression that Laszlo would actually get his life together, they would be sorely disappointed. Laszlo's new show, Integrity 2.0, would feature a new live format, where Laszlo would walk the streets of Liberty City with a microphone, interviewing people and attempting to capture real America or some such nonsense. But Laszlo's egotistical and yet simultaneously insecure personality would frequently overtake whatever topic he was otherwise attempting to cover, and he would also become increasingly violent while both on and off air, even assaulting people on more than one occasion, for which it does not appear he was ever charged. Laszlo would patrol the streets of Algonquin talking to whomever he could find, and often being drunk before even going live. Laszlo imagined his new format as a game changer for radio, even calling it Radio 2.0 at one point, and simultaneously running a podcast about the radio show, and writing a regular blog about the podcast. Though he would tout the new show as innovative and imaginative, in reality it would be a budget compromise after the Bank of Liberty denied him a loan the same day that his rent was due on the studio that they likely intended to use for the show. In many ways, the tables had flipped. No longer was Laszlo interviewing crazy guests and appearing sane by comparison. Now, Laszlo seemed to often be competing with the guests to prove just how insane he could be. He would frequently divulge personal details about himself on air, such as his habit of hanging out by women's clinics to cruise for chicks, and frequently wind up in controversy for things he allowed some of his guests to say while live on the air. You know, this show is not going to be like the one I did at that, that radio station in buttfuck nowhere. I spent the last few years of my life in a gin martini getting shafted by the cruel fates of slow career suicide. The city makes you angry. Makes you want to rip a, rip a fool's head off. You know, bite people on the cheek for talking on the fucking mobile phone on the train. You know, bite people walking too slow up the stairs of the subway. You know, bite people that are more successful than me. It's like I'm radioactive. Why can't I have a girl half my age like all my friends that are in the media? Huh? Someone young and dumb. You know, I've taken a lot of risks, J just like this. You know, I'm, I'm back. They say you can't keep a good guy down. Uh, you, sir, can you keep a good guy down? Sure, but I don't want to go down, man. You can go down on me. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, easy fella. You know, I'm a raging heterosexual. <laughs> Ask my ex-wife. That's why they call me Jack Rabbit Jones. What is wrong with this place? God, you people are freaks. Hey, asshole, I'm not a freak. Right, whatever. You know, there may be a lot of freaks in Liberty City, but the biggest freak in town is back me by this time he would also become so desperate for sexual contact that he would on at least one occasion procure a prostitute who may or may not have had a learning disability no longer supported by the likes of donald love or another mainstream radio station he would rely on a sponsorship from the company zit who ran a service identifying music tracks for listeners but they would drop their sponsorship deal after only a few weeks forcing lasso to look elsewhere to keep his passion project going now, throughout his life, Laszlo would apparently frequently live with his parents whenever he could not find somewhere else to stay. After losing his sponsorship from Zit, he would also apparently lose his father to unknown causes, and shortly thereafter, return to his mother's house. While attending his father's funeral, however, the man hosting the service would hit on Laszlo's mother, and within weeks or months, they would be married, giving Laszlo a new stepfather, Isaac Hammerstein of Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services, who was quite a wealthy man in comparison to Laszlo's father. Laszlo would begin abiding by a daily curfew and follow a list of rules set out by his mother and stepfather, and in exchange, Isaac would fund Laszlo's new radio show, allowing him to make a return only weeks after losing the sponsorship and his father. 
He started as an intern on Vice City's V Rock, then a full time DJ before turning to Los Santos based Entertaining America, and then Chatterbox. Now, after being forced out of town by overzealous regulators upset about payola scandals, drug problems, and continued accusations of sexual deviancy, he's back. Laszlo on Integrity 2.0. So everybody, you're listening to Integrity 2.0, and we're back. We have got funding. We got funding. We are back on the air. And as soon as I can figure the technology out and what a, a DNS is, we will be live on the World Wide Web, streaming uh, with what I believe is called a web page. That's right, Integrity 2.0 taking free speech somewhere entirely new, the Internet. We're going global. Global people, like like all the way around, you where know, people like don't even wear bras or shoes. <laughs> it, it's a great big media reach around, and for once, Laszlo is not getting bummed. I am doing the bumming. <laughs> I'm bumming the world. <laughs> where am I gonna stick it? Oh yeah, yeah, you take it, baby. You like that? Maybe I'll pull your hair, world. Maybe a little low uh, below the equator. How do you like that? How do you like that? Who's your daddy now, world? Laszlo, yeah, that's right. I am the Big Bang. <laughs> I'm back. I was a dwarf star, and now I'm fucking supernova. <laughs> so, everybody, uh, welcome Integrity 2.0. After a few weeks off the air, we're back. We got funding. And I want to say, seriously, uh, a, a quick moment. Thanks, Mom. Money's rotting in your 401k. The financial district screwed everybody in this country. Invest in new media. Me. And now your money is building a show business empire. One brick at a time. Today, Liberty City. Tomorrow, reach around. <laughs> I love you, Mom. This is the best thing you ever did for me. And I love you, too, Stepdad Isaac. I mean, I, seriously, I love you. Uh, you know, I admit I struggled when you came into my life and our family, but I really do love you. I know you're the man of the house. Now, I can accept the rules about the curfew. You know, I, I'm going to get my new place as soon as I find something suitable. I respect you. I respect your rules. I cherish our time together. There, all right? I said it. Okay. Liberty City, the media. It's a fucking jungle out there, like a like a Greek girl's pants, you know? Thick shrubbery. I'm talk, talking like undergrowth, overgrowth, where she's busting out the sides you know, in a massive sweet spot that emanates juice. That's me. Yeah, I'm the G-spot of radio, and I'm back. I, I'm a middle-aged man who has been forced by the collapse of global media to move back in with his mom and his truly wonderful stepdad, cock face. I'm sorry, I mean Isaac. And yet, my namesake, Lazarus, that's my name. I'm back from the dead. It's Laszlo 2.0, Integrity 2.0, maybe even 3.0 some days. You know, beaten but never broken. You can't take a broadcasting titan down. I learned that. And, and trust me, I'm no exception. I'm here to stay, like the national debt or syphilis. I'm that unwelcome itch and pus-ridden sore that just won't die. I'm telling the truth about the city, to the city, for the city, and any corporate sponsors who want me to put in a good word for them, trust me. I'm available for sponsorship. I'll tattoo your shit on my junk. <laughs> I don't care. I know about branding. You know, I do public appearances. I go out there, uh, give some shit away. T-shirts, dog. T-shirts. I'll hand out samples of your product, spray cheese, cigarettes. I'll give them to kids. I don't give a shit. I love capitalism. I hate taxes. Um, and about the appearances, you know, I got good rates. I'm a funny guy. I make people love me, and, and, and that means they'll love your product. Uh, my last public appearance was incredible. It, it was for my step-niece Jill's bat mitzvah. I mean, they didn't pay me formally, uh, you know, so I sort of grabbed what I thought I was worth out of that, that bag they hand around. I mean, you know, it's the honor system, really. Integrity is what the show's about. You know, I did a bit of stand-up there. The, the Beanie Kids, <laughs> they love me. I don't think they're allowed to watch TV. You know, they related to my stories about sleeping with fat rock groupies. Uh, they really did. I told this incredible joke about incest. <laughs> Man, it was shocking. I mean, it was daring, but it was true. My stepdad's family's riddled with this stuff. I mean, family tree like a tent pole. More inner cousin marriage than a bunch of hillbilly hamsters. And you married into that family, Mom. Nice one. You know, Dad's not so bad, so he drinks a little bit. I drink every day. Huh? And Martin, my brother, you're, you're Judas and a loser. Being a rich TV producer is not cool anymore. This is fucking the 2000s, bro. Nobody watches TV. We steal everything on the internet. That's why I'm going to be a new media player, you know? Playing this city like a dirty old man plays a tween chat room. Just that amazing feeling, wondering if when you go over to her house, 
is it going to be a setup? Uh, we're coming to you almost live from the streets of Liberty City, talking to real citizens, prominent street folk, you know, disadvantaged people, people in wheelchairs with one leg, urban characters, stinky homeless people, you know? God damn, boy, you just talk and talk and talk and never say nothing. What? You're going to pay me my goddamn money like you said. I've been playing this goddamn saxophone, walking with your ass for three blocks. Yes, you've been walking with me for three blocks because I need theme music, you moron. And something about a saxophone just says, the streets. It says, I'm lonely, I'm gritty, there's a siren in the background, it's raining. I've just thrown up on myself. Should I play some jazz or sit on my pea-stained mattress and cry, tie off my arm, insert some skag? Bitch, what the fuck you talking about? You said you're going to pay me two fucking dollars. Uh, I haven't got change. All I got is a five. Don't you have change? You're, that's what you do. You're hey, man, fuck you. I got to learn a living out here, buddy. Uh, so am I. So the fuck am I. Look, I'll give you a five. Just sing the song I told you to sing at the beginning of the show. I can't remember it. Well, here's a hint. Who's your favorite radio celebrity? Martin Sirius? <laughs> Martin Sirius? Fuck that hack sellout. Me, Laszlo. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. I love your show. I love it. Leslie with the show Intimacy. Leslie? It's Laszlo with integrity, not intimacy. They offered me that gig, but even I won't stoop that low. You know, a couple sexuality show, taking calls from perverts and morons in the middle of the night, how to keep things hot in your marriage when she's as frigid as an Eskimo. Is it fidelity sexy? Let's talk about marital aids. I mean, give me a break, people. Nobody wants to hear about sex on the radio. Please. Come on, Clarence. It's Theodore. Bullshit. All saxophone players are called Clarence or Walter. Now, if you're a musical people, you sure are cranky. Say what? What'd you, what'd you say? I mean, homeless people. Homeless people. I'm not racist. Uh, let's face facts, ladies and gentlemen. Fair people of Liberty City. I may have stumbled in life. Stumbled, been on my knees a little bit, but I'm a man. A tiger. I'm Laszlo. And a tiger needs cubs. She was an intern. It was rock and roll. What do you expect? You know, I really thought my wife was more sophisticated than that. But no, what did she do? After she found out, she ran off with my best friend, you cliche-ridden bitch. You're ridiculous. Well, you didn't tame me, and you couldn't tame me. You've tamed him all right. I saw the pictures of you guys online on your around-the-world vacation. Oh, I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Sure, he's smiling now. You know I'm packing more junk than him. Trust me. I'm the king of whiskey, dick. But when I'm sober, I'm a fucking tiger. That's a fact. A fact. Plus, I know I'm bigger, because I measured when he was asleep. Seriously, if that was all I was packing, I wouldn't be sticking photos of anything on the Internet, let alone putting beautiful rendered pictures of my above-average broadsword on sites with a caption that says, What do you think, ladies? And they use the letter U instead of Y-O-U. Uh, not that I've ever done that. I, I haven't. But, I mean, seriously, what do you expect? Look at me. Women can't handle me. I've got all the chromosomes, X, Y, Z, all of them. I'm a male. Isaac Hammerstein also had several daughters, though, as well, as his business's name implies. And Laszlo would almost immediately gravitate to them and be accused of forcibly touching one of them, which, given his history, isn't surprising. He intensely hated being under his stepfather's thumb, though, and would use any available opportunity on air to beg for somebody to sponsor him once again, being prepared to do anything for the money. He would also develop an intense hatred for many of his competitors in the radio business, not that it was nearly as lucrative as it had once been. He developed a particular disdain for Martin Sirius, host of the Martin Sirius Show on WKTT. During his time on Integrity, Laszlo would seem to lack just that. He would be known for urinating in public while on the air, occasionally assaulting or insulting the people he interviewed, making unwanted sexual advances on multiple women, and even employing the assistance of an undocumented immigrant from El Salvador named Jorge whom he could pay a substandard wage to act as his assistant during recordings on the street. All right, we are back. Radio broadcast almost live from the streets of Liberty City. This is your city brought to you only on Integrity 2.0. The station has really brought a new meaning to Integrity. It's brought a new meaning to media. You know, I take the values of new media and I bring them to old media. You know, that's raging ego, substandard content, and heartbreaking inanity. I'm <laughs> just kidding. This is about cutting edge free speech, a spirit of innovation, adventure, paid for by our sponsor, which I should mention. This 
episode of Integrity brought to you courtesy of Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services, burying your dead to their final resting place with dignity. So much dignity that at a funeral, while I'm fucking crying my eyes out, you pick up a dead man's sister, even though she isn't properly divorced from my dad yet. My mom is dating some dude who touches corpses all day. Hey, can you imagine that? I just get creeped out touching his leathery old uh, formaldehyde hand. Ugh, everything around the house has these yellow stains on it. And everything's about death. I'm about life. I mean, not like uh, like a protester, because I've done the other thing a few times, but, I mean, we had to. She was young. But, listen, if your loved one passes away, which they always do, usually at a really inconvenient time, like when I'm snowboarding or too stoned to drive, get them buried by Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services, bringing dignity to a difficult time at new recession prices. And maybe then, old Isaac can join your family. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I, I love you, you old goat. Seriously. Seriously, when I, when I die, I want nothing more than your hand up my ass and your straw sucking the brain out of my skull and replacing my bodily fluids with toxic chemicals so a bunch of assholes can sit around and pretend to cry like they cared about me. Nobody cares about me. Um, as you can see, sponsors, advertising on Integrity 2.0 is a personal service that I bring you and your target demographic, you know, together in a harmonious way, like in a 70s record where everybody's high. Yeah, I make these reads personal. I'm cutting through the marketing nonsense. Uh, speaking of nonsense, Integrity 2.0 is expanding. We are becoming a team. That's right. Integrity 2.0 taking over. It's like how things are merging these days. You, you used to go to Clucking Bell, and that was great because you wanted to eat a bucket of chips and then go home and cry. And then you said, if only Clucking Bell and Burger Shot were in the same place, I could enjoy both at the same time. So then you're like, what if all fast food restaurants were like at a truck stop? Like, if the world was a giant food court. We're making radio a giant food court. And out in the parking lot, a man will kidnap your daughter. That's life on the open road. I know. <laughs> My sister disappeared that way. <laughs> and I didn't do it. Why would I kill my sister? But anyway, we're taking on a team of highly skilled, well-paid interns. Pay not in cash, but in exposure, experience, a degree in the University of Laszlo. That sounds like an awesome t-shirt. University of Laszlo. Uh, and without further pomp and circumstance, let me introduce you to the, the show's new intern, assistant to the producer, Jorge, uh, but I call him Georgie Boy. It's Jorge. Georgie Boy is what liberals call an undocumented worker. <laughs> But he's my little buddy. Aren't you my little buddy? No. Uh, Jorge the intern, let me ask you. If you die of sunstroke outside a hardware mega store waiting for work, uh, where would you like your body to be taken? El Salvador. Right. El Salvador, which is Spanish for the Savior. And who is our savior? Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services. Correct. They saved this show and my career. So let's get to it, Georgie boy. Jorge. Right. Whatever. What I need is an intern to bring me ideas, okay? I be funny. I am funny. I get all the credit. You learn a valuable lesson at the University of Laszlo. Jorge, tell me, where did you work before? In Nicaragua. Nicaragua, which is a company that sells nicotine water. See if you can get them to sponsor the show, man. I'm addictive. And I'd love to drink nicotine water. So Integrity 2.0 is more than just a radio show. We're a radio show that walks the streets of Liberty City, feels the pulse, see if it's, if it's dead. But with Laszlo, it seems, nothing lasts forever, and he rarely seemed content to stay in one place for more than a few years at a time. Sometime after 2008, he would decide to move back to Los Santos San Andreas to try his luck in Vinewood again. He would begin seeing a personal trainer who would frequently insult and belittle him, and with whom he seemed to have a considerable amount of sexual tension. He would allow his drug addiction, specifically to cocaine and MDMA, to get even worse and he would purchase a house somewhere in LS and begin paying off a mortgage on it, probably thanks in large part to him being allowed to return to work for WCTR on the show Chattersphere, but only be given the role of co-host to the younger, more in-touch female host, Michelle Makes. With times having changed quite substantially since Laszlo's days as a DJ for V-Rock, he would finally begin to be called out for his misogyny and be mocked by Michelle as well as the wider public for his increasingly pathetic antics. 
In fact, it seems Chattersphere was only his longest running gig his second time around in Los Santos. Since WCTR was forced to constantly move him from studio to studio as allegations of sexual harassment and otherwise undignified, unprofessional behavior seemed to follow him wherever he went. It's the Chattersphere with Michelle and Laszlo. Hi, I'm Michelle Makes. And I'm Laszlo. And this is Chattersphere, Chattersphere with, with Michelle, Michelle and Laszlo. God, I just love doing that. Me too. So, anyway, on today's show, on we're going to. On today's gonna... show, we've got some amazing we stuff. We have a co host who is not accepting the reality of their contract. Come on, Michelle, let me do the intro. Okay, I'm really good at it. I know how to monologue. Seriously, I talk to myself a lot. You know, sometimes I just stand in front of the mirror with no clothes on and say, you like this? You want some of this? Oh, grab my I know. I get it. You're an adult loser. You're pathetic. Every show you do this. No, I'm sorry. You know the rules. Sorry, everybody. See, we're Vinewood liberals. We love each other, but we've got massive egos, so we can't quite get along. My ego was shattered long ago. You know, it was, it was called the 80s, but I picked up the pieces and glued it together with bourbon and acting out sexually with not that very attractive of a woman. Okay? So, speak for yourself. I'm speaking for the show, Dicktard. Chattersphere, hosted by me, Michelle Meeks, with sidekick support work from you. Until your contract runs out and you can be let go, Mr. Laszlo, I don't have a surname. Every week. You rub my face in it every goddamn week. Because every week you act like I'm not here and it's still one of your countless previous shows that didn't work out and yet somehow allow you to fail upwards. Man, you must have some amazing pictures of whichever executives you're blackmailing. Listen, if you're going to fail, fail up, I always say. And you, you're not even being fair. Fair is you calling me a bitch? That was once. Or stealing my jokes? That was twice. Or interrupting me? Or I don't interrupt you. Or you just did it again. I know, it's a joke. The reason men interrupt women all the time is because you yammer on and on. Oh, yeah. And they talk and they talk and you do the math. Really funny, misogynist. Make me out to be a shrew so you can attack me. That's the easiest trick in the book. This is the 21st century, Laszlo. We're all equal now. Every right-minded person in this city knows that. And still, you've got gender issues. The fact is, you hate women. I love women. <sighs> Michelle, come here. I, listen, we, we're, we're off on the wrong foot. Let me rub your back. Oh, my God. Is that a Ew, ball? get off. Don't rub my back. Besides, you're only a liberal because you're John depends on it. Don't be mad at me because you've got moles. You should get that checked. And I'm a liberal because you have to be in the entertainment industry. I'd much rather be chewing tobacco, grabbing my nuts, mistreating women, wearing a wife beater shirt, drinking gin, huffing Freon. I'm the real deal, Michelle. The real deal. My fans know it. <laughs> when I work out, I do it for the fans. When I'm pumping iron, looking at my pecs, I go, the fans want these pecs. I got a TV show, a radio show. I'm everywhere. I'm on a billboard. I'm in bathrooms. Then one idiotic program director on a rinky-dink talk network says that I don't attract the youth demographic. Well, that's because they're all high. So now I'm saddled with a 22-year-old microblogger with typical millennial issues as a co-host. Host! Whatever. You're the co-host of Chat. Sphere, the right-minded, left-thinking, progressive entertainment talk show for all of Los Santos and Blaine County. Oh, you just love saying that, don't you? My name's Michelle Meeks. God, you're like a parrot that sits on the shoulder of a pirate. You hate women, and you won't stop quoting those dragon brain fantasy novels. I like saying winch, even if it is from 1402 and there were dragons flying around upside down. Ugh, enough of your renaissance fair speak. You're ridiculous. We have an incredible show today. We've got, who have we got? Let me see, Brother Adrian. He runs the Children of the Mountain, that study program you keep hearing advertised. That is a cult. Why do they always give me the cults to interview? God, I'm doomed. You want to do a show in this market? It's cults and, and whack jobs and fake boobies everywhere. You're so judgmental. I'm not talking about yours. They're tiny fake. I mean, it's cute. I'd like to put little army men on them, and they could have a little battle, and I'd take pictures and put it on the internet. That's disturbing. It's awesome. It's pretty sexual. No, please, keep describing my rack. It's really doing things for me. Okay, You I host will. a singing contest and work on a celebrity and liberal talk show. The one thing you're not meant to have is a Opinions. Don't be mad at me because you've got hairy nipples. What are you talking about? I've seen them. 
You know what? You do the show. You're obviously so much better at radio than I am. What have you been on the air for, six months? I love it when you sulk. I feel like your mother. Anyway, we have a great show. Before Brother Adrian, we're going to speak to a few of your favorite stars, everybody. Actor Jimmy Boston will be on the phone. Tyler Dixon. Milton McElroy. Then we'll take some calls, discuss the issues affecting Los Santos, entertainment, politics, health. It's going to be a great show. In addition to Chattersphere, however, Laszlo would also, by 2013, be given his first real role on television, being seen instead of only just heard, when he landed a gig as the host of the popular reality TV show, Fame or Shame. He would develop a rivalry with one of the judges, Hugh Harrison, that would frequently become violent on air. But Laszlo's mistreatment by the judges, the contestants, and the audience seemed to, by this point in his career, be all that he was good for. He would also berate the contestants, judges, and audience himself, still constantly in denial of just how pathetic he'd become, but trying to prove everyone wrong, perhaps. On at least one occasion, he would even sleep with a contestant in exchange for advancing her in the competition, if the tabloids at the time are to be believed. It's unclear for how many seasons Laszlo was the host of Fame or Shame, but by 2013, the season he was hosting was seeing the lowest ratings in the show's history, which may or may not have been in part because of him. Eventually, though, Laszlo would run afoul of several individuals who we have already covered in previous seasons of our sister series, Grand Theft Auto Biographies, all three seasons available now from Weasel, while working on his job as host of Famer Shame. When a young contestant, Tracy DeSanta, came on the show to audition, Laszlo would pull his typical misogynistic, invasive, and creepy behavior, but be unlucky enough for it to be witnessed by one Michael DeSanta and Trevor Phillips. <laughs> Alright! Yeah! That was really... Alright! It's the auditions, Fame or Shame, season 14, right here in Vinewood, San Andreas. Coming up next, it's Tracy DeSanta. Judges, Tracy DeSanta. Yes. <laughs> Hi. All right. Tracy's a dancer, but she also likes acting, modeling, and working with children. That's, that's beautiful. You're so original, like oh. a, a basket full of puppies or a <laughs> rainbow or a pile of puke. Oh. Who are these clowns? That's my dad and... Trevor? Two dads. Uh, <laughs> Great. Wow. Very San Andreas. What are you guys doing here? Yeah, what are you uh, doing here? Okay, I'm back. Relax, chill. Make yourself at home. He's got a little show to do here. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, it's fame or shame for Tracy DeSanta. Trevor and Michael would chase Laszlo across Los Santos, all the way to the LS Storm Drain where Trevor would threaten him into performing a degrading dance without his pants on, which was subsequently posted all over social media. Oh, hey, 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 guys. You run out of batteries, huh? I didn't mean anything by it, all right? Oh, yeah? Well, that little girl sat on my lap when she was two years old, and I swore to God that I would rip the fucking skin off anyone who fucking wronged her. Look, I'm just a dumb A-list celebrity trying to entertain America, okay? I got a lot of stuff going on right now, dude, besides you trying to kill me. Now I got multiple sexual harassment lawsuits, plus I'm an addict, all right? And I've relapsed. I can't stop jacking, dude. I jack it in traffic. What's your talent, huh? Uh, I mean, aside from love and sex. Dude, haven't you seen my show? It's not live, it's not funny. That's my genius, I got no fucking talent. You clearly ain't being humble, T. Uh, you proved your point. Uh, this is your daughter. You should be wanting to rip the fucking ponytail off the back of this guy's head! And you! Huh? Pants off. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. There you go. Uh, uh, All right. What are you doing? Now, I want you to dance sexy, celebrity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need music or... Are you trying to fucking annoy me, huh? I'll, I'll dance. Good. <laughs> All right, all right, now drop it like it's hot, all right? I want to see you get nice and low. Come on, lower, lower, come on. Oh, please don't kill me, okay? I'm supposed to be on a magazine cover next week. All right, all right, come on, get no. up. Take off, go, now, before I change my mind. I got it all on my camera, you fucking pussy. The world's gonna see your shit. Despite this encounter, though, only weeks later, he would be right back at it, when Tracy DeSanta approached him, asking if there was any way for her to audition for the show again, to which he replied exactly what you're probably expecting. I'm looking for something hip that, you know, says I'm capable of violence, but I'm awesome in the sack. So listen, babe, if you want to make it in Vinewood, you got to do whatever it takes, even if whatever it takes is a depressed borderline alcoholic who hosts the third most popular talent show amongst the 40-year-old female demographic? So, 
You'll let me on the show if I blow you? Yes, and if you could wear some black lipstick, the little guy loves the goth vibe. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Laszlo. <laughs> Dude, that was entirely out of context, bro. Jim, you find the ink slinger, sit on him. Laszlo here is gonna have a little cosmetic work done. No, please. Oh. Whoa, 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 stay put, you lame-ass Mark. Uh, sure, kid. What? Oh. Uh. <sighs> oh, no, that's my, that's my signature, my ponytail. Now I gotta get extensions. No, what you gotta get is my daughter, whatever she wants. Yeah, without sucking on your piddle stick. Look, okay, guys, that was a joke. I'm a clown. I'm a sad, lonely little clown. Hey. You're gonna put her on your show and you're gonna make sure she looks good. Look, okay, I got a lot of juice in this town, but I mean, I'm not a miracle. Just do it! Uh, yeah. All right. All right, Trace, let's go. We gotta get to the therapist. What? So, I'll like call you or something, okay? <laughs> Bye. There's ever a family that needs therapy. <laughs> My pony. How do I look? <laughs> It's not good, is it? Finally, though, his second encounter with Michael DeSanta would prove enough to scare him into compliance. As by the finale of that year's season of Fame or Shame, Laszlo would go out of his way to try and bias the judges in favor of Tracy DeSanta, terrified that if he didn't, Michael would come back and possibly even kill him. But he would keep trying to stay relevant for a little bit longer, attending the red carpet premiere of the film Meltdown that summer, without knowing it was produced by the very same man who he was now so scared of. Thanks, Antonio. Keep me nice and tight. Hey, it's Laszlo on the red carpet of Meltdown. Some big stars, some beautiful dresses. We're gonna see some side boot tonight. Come on. We did it! Solomon! We fucking did it! Fucking A! <laughs> Fuck you, fate! I may be a lecherous old has-been, but I'm a has-been with a premiere at the Oriental Theater on Vinewood Boulevard. I'll see you in there, kid. Hey, thanks. Enjoy the picture, everyone! Mr. Richards, Mr. Richards, hi. If I could just bother you for a second. Uh, I'm Laszlo from uh, Fame or Shame, um, but I do some acting on the side. I was wondering if... Uh... Oh, yeah, of course. You should come see me, kid. I think I got a project that would be perfect for you. Oh, that's fantastic. It's called The Closet. Really modern stuff. <laughs> Pervert. Come on. No, 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 no. Let's go She's over here. lying, okay? I never had surgery. Come on. Milton, Milton, hi. Sorry to bother you. Quick question. Get in here tight. Um, love, love, loved the movie. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. When, when you were that polar bear and you had to eat your baby, I mean, that okay. was... Okay. All right, Jesus Christ. That was emotional. Can I just have a okay. hug? That really affected me. All right, I gotta go. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Excuse me. Come on. Come on, let's get in there. Ah, Laszlo. Oh, shit. Come on, shit dick. But his time in the limelight, or really having any real relevance whatsoever, was finally over. And that was when I, dear viewer, finally encountered Laszlo for the second time, though under circumstances that forbid me acknowledging our very brief interaction back in the 80s. Well into my time undercover researching for this show, which I spent the better part of 10 years doing, I was given the opportunity to begin running a nightclub with the famous nightclub owner out of Liberty City, Tony Prince with conditions for my sponsors to film everything that went on inside for the eventual release of this program, just like with all of the illicit businesses that I operated. By 2018, Laszlo had finally fallen into a routine, it seems, having actually held onto a single job for more than five years in fame or shame, though the show's declining relevance seemed to mirror his own. He was now relegated to serving as effectively an assistant to Tony Prince, which, all things considered, was a far comfier gig than a man like him deserved. This is meant to be a live event, people! We need lights! Where's the light man? Brian! Give me a fucking spotlight! All right, let's run through this. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness live television entertainment in front of your very eyes. This is Fame or Shame Live with your host, Laszlo! He does that, and then... Shit! Ow! And then I run on, and everybody claps, and then I go, it's time to introduce the guests! And then, where's my assistant with a list of guests? Hello? If you pull that pregnancy pity party on me one more time, I will lose my cool, okay? Tony, your friend's here. All right, thank God. Brilliant. That's a wrap. Piss off, Laszlo. What? This is a nightclub. This live version of an awful TV show is not happening. Nah, nah, but Tony... Oh, but Tony, please, nothing. We have a new landlord. 
We're going back to what we do best, playing loud music, encouraging awful behavior, dancing until dawn, and having personal crises like good, God-fearing idiots! <laughs> Tony, please, I'm desperate. <laughs> Listen, I love narcissism. I built a career on narcissism. I stare into the mirror and beat off like a real man. I pose, I preen, but there's a limit here. I cannot, I will not sit here and watch it. We need kids, young people, midlife crisis divorcees, whoever's gonna bring the party, and we need them wasted, and we need them dancing! Not taking selfies with some fuckwits! I ran the fucking 1980s. I was the 1990s. And I'm back. Okay. Get me a DJ! But, Tony, I'm the DJ. <laughs> I'm the, no, you're not a fucking DJ. You're a dick. A, a dick? But, uh, Tony, I got you a bunch of celebs. I'm gay Tony. The gay Tony. I'm the celebrity here. Me and him. But if you want to bring some famous people into the club, we will host them gracefully. Because I am favor and grace, and I am back. I got an investor. We're running shit again. I need a DJ. <laughs> I've been high since 2010. What do these kids need nowadays? I I'm having a breakdown. <sighs> I'm too old. Me too. Yeah. Tony, can we hug? Yeah, yeah. Please. Sure, yeah. You shouted at me a lot. All right, all right, all right. And Tony? Yeah. I don't think you can say gay Tony anymore. It's not PC. The internet will go crazy. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. All right, all right. Find me English Dave. English Dave? He says a DJ to Booker. He's in the book. All right, come on, boys. Let me show you around. All right, listen, big guy, work your list of famous people. We're opening very soon. Okay, you got it. All right, all right. All right lift it up. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. perfect. All right. Come here, look at this. I love it. Omega, what do you think? I think it's 100! <laughs> oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm seeing tracers. I am the opening DJ. Get the crowd bumping! Get the millennials boys with the wooka wooka wooka! Hey, go away! What? Go get me some celebrities for opening night. Put them up in the VIP lounge if you have to, but you will not be DJing! Ha-ham! <laughs> My glow stick! Oh. To some, it might have seemed like Laszlo had finally found some peace, or at least been able to step back out of the limelight and calm down at least a little bit. He would begin spending nearly all of his time in my nightclub or around Tony or one of the only other people who seemed to tolerate him, English Dave, but otherwise, he would do the one thing that he seemed to have been incapable of doing for so much of his well-documented public life, mind his own business. That was five years ago. Laszlo, to this day, continues to spend nearly every single night that he can at my club, usually dancing alone, but has otherwise not taken on any new work in radio or television since his departure from WCTR in Famer Shame. Nobody knows how he's spending his days, only that he isn't spending them as an eccentric creep anymore, at least not in the public eye. And there have even been rumors amongst the few people at my club who still remember Laszlo that he might once again pack up his bags and move, this time back to Vice City, but people will always love to talk. Laszlo has been an entitled, greedy, self-obsessed narcissist his entire life, despite or perhaps because of his neglectful childhood. From a young age, his ego became inflated at a time when a young man who wasn't entirely comfortable in his sexuality was able to get more attention than in previous decades. Despite not actually getting much attention, apparently, he would get enough to further inflate his ego and spur on his impulsive behaviors, feeling more and more entitled to money, drugs, and women, regardless of if they even seemed interested in him or not. Laszlo is also highly irresponsible, getting a young woman pregnant under less than wholesome circumstances and failing to step up and do the right thing, possibly even pressuring the young woman into getting an abortion. He was unable to hold down a job seemingly his entire life, being fired from almost every radio and TV gig he ever had, with the possible exception of Chatter's Fear and Fame or Shame. And his love life was nothing but a chaotic roller coaster of adultery, polygamy, and emotional abuse. His marriages all fell apart and he would have no known long-lasting healthy relationships beyond his three wives perhaps due in part or in whole to his repressed sexual feelings for his own mother, and possibly also grandmother, as well as his attraction to mostly older or uncomfortably younger women. In addition to all of his issues with women, he was also strongly suspected of being gay, though at least some of this can be attributed to the homophobic culture of the times. He was once witnessed attending a gay brothel and being spanked by one of the people working there, and may have had a brief fourth marriage at one point to a female presenting transgender man, 
that he immediately regretted, though it isn't clear if this was one of his original three wives, or a fourth one that he rarely spoke about. Laszlo is a scam artist, a pervert, and is often physically violent with little to no prompting, on top of being a massive hypocrite who will do anything for money. He has also been known to change his political opinions to suit the room he's in, exploit illegal migrants for his own benefit, and was caught taking bribes on more than one occasion. In short, there isn't a whole lot that can be said about Laszlo that's positive, only that he hasn't killed hundreds of people like so many of the other people we've examined here on this program. And in fact, he's actually never killed anybody. Probably. As we said, unlike most of the people we have examined on this show and on GTA biographies, Laszlo does not have a significant rap sheet of actual crimes he was arrested or charged for. Nonetheless, he does still have quite a laundry list of misdeeds when compared to the average American, starting with the possible murder of his own sister sometime we assume in the 1980s, though little weight should be placed on this since no actual charges were ever brought or evidence found. Sometime in 1992, he would attempt to sleep with his own mother, though the details of this encounter have never been made public, and he was never officially charged with a crime, as far as we could tell. In 1994, he would be charged with stalking, possibly by one of his ex-wives, and then again in 1998, he would be charged with forcible touching, possibly of an elderly woman on the streets of Liberty City. In 2001, he would become embroiled in the Paola scandal, and again in 2004, but he would also be charged with public lewdness for peeing in public at a Liberty City Swingers game in 2002. He would once again expose himself to somebody in 2005 and be charged for it, and in 2008 he would urinate in public on the air of his new show, as well as attack a hot dog vendor for insulting him, which was also recorded live on the radio, and we therefore assume he was eventually charged for it. In 2013, though it does not appear he was actually charged for it, he continued to engage in sexual misconduct across multiple studios of West Coast Talk Radio apparently, which we can only assume will lead to charges at some point in the future. And then in 2018 he became associated with Tony Prince, and more importantly, me. And unlike me, Laszlo does not have a deal with both the FIB and IAA to operate with absolute prosecutorial immunity, meaning he has been an accessory to every illegal good I've moved through my nightclub since 2018. For documentary purposes, of course. How does a man go from slightly relevant and almost popular DJ to completely irrelevant and largely hated pseudo-celebrity in just three short decades? I'll tell you how, with mountains of cocaine, self-loathing, and dysfunctional parents. That's how. Tonight we have examined not one of the most evil people we have ever had on our program, but perhaps one of its most pathetic. A man so strong in his belief in himself that he failed to see just how toxic and rotten his influence was on everyone around him, and his true value to America as an entertainer in being somebody for everyone else to laugh at. Even you, dear viewer, yes, you, as awful as you probably are, are better than Laszlo. And if you're watching this at home and you're not quite old enough to be watching, drop out of school, kids. Laszlo finished school and so did I. And look where we wound up. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of A Criminal History, and if you did, consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash Guinness Walker. That's Guinness with one N. Because the corporation running this network is already looking into my own various criminal dealings in Los Santos. America is a dangerous place, folks. You never know if that weird guy shouting to himself on the corner is actually recording a nationally syndicated radio show that's about to make you famous for all the wrong reasons. I'll see you next time on A Criminal History. I've been your host, Guinness Walker, the criminal historian, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for watching.